Welcome to EdTech Weekly, Voices from the Ground, where we talk to people in education about their responses to the current COVID-19 crisis in 10 short minutes. This podcast is a part of the Connected Open Online Learning Initiative of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Over to our host for today. Hi, I'm Jennifer, your host for today. I'm an educator and researcher, and today I'm speaking with Sujata Narona, who is the founder and director of the library-based organization Bookworm, which runs out of Goa. Hi, Sujata. Thank you for talking to us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for thinking that I could be included in this galaxy of educationists. Thank you. So, Sujata, uh, Bookworm has been working with schools and local communities in Goa through the Library in Schools program and the Mobile Outreach program. Uh, Your work actually makes books a reality for some of the most marginalized children in Goa. Can you tell us a little more about your work and uh, how has this COVID-19 situation affected it? Yeah, I think you described our work uh, sharply. Uh, So, I'll to how it affect this this lockdown uh, has affected us i think it's it's a kind of uh, severe institutional separation uh, w- was the feeling that we you know we had as soon as we were told we had to close our libraries and we couldn't um, interact with the community through the library so that's been an extremely hard blow for both uh, uh, all of us who work within the organization and the children I think one of the most uh, lovely, um, you know, outcomes of this difficult time has been these uh, excited calls by children who call the team saying, Didi, when you're coming back and I miss the stories. Uh, These are Mm -hmm. conversations that would have never happened if not for an ongoing library relationship. Uh, So it's affected us in the sense that we've had to really pause and rethink how do we continue to keep connections with our communities and how we need to actually reorder uh, our approach uh, to access and stories. We are still in that process of figuring things out. And I think, uh, I mean, this lockdown has been really severe and students, children have not been even able to complete their school year. What is the cost of this crisis going to be on library engagement with children and their literacy uh, levels and things like that. Do you think governments can do anything to turn this into an opportunity? Actually, for us, this is something I have been uh, worrying about uh, quite deeply, is for us the months of the summer, which in Goa are April and May, when our schools slow down and close by mid-April, have been rich uh, literacy opportunities uh, where we, you know, run uh, camps and camps also sound so severe, but we we, we would run uh, language arts kind of activities over long periods of time, welcoming multiple ages, uh, immersing ourselves in art, storytelling, bookmaking. And I have seen, particularly in the last three, four years, that children who participate deeply in the summer activities actually just you know they go on to reading more powerfully once the school year begins through the library you know I see some new bloom in their eyes and mind on uh, you know what stories to look for how to talk about stories and this is very troubling because this the summer slide that we know as a theoretical concept is also very real for communities who are not immersed in literate activities and this abrupt shutdown of schooling, uh, this complete disengagement from anything to do with, uh, you know, l- languages they're unfamiliar with, but which are needed for school learning with print is going to have a severe impact. And it worries me that as yet, no one is really calling this out. And we're not really worried mm-hmm. about the intellectual health of our children at least from marginalized communities. I can see online that there is such a flurry uh, for, for, you know, communities that can access resources. I don't know if that's good and meaningful, but I can see that there is a buzz. 
but for those who are on the other side of the digital divide we are also struggling to think of what to do so it's not only mm. one stakeholders problem uh it, it it's quite significant is now what do we do and how do we do what we want to do so there will be an impact there will be a severe impact and as always yeah. i think it will affect the marginalized the most um, since you spoke about online activities i also noticed that uh, you've been uh, using your social media handles uh, quite actively in the last few weeks i can see that you are continuing your advocacy for library work and library educators in really creative ways uh, what prompted you to do this and can you briefly describe what you are doing So I think one thing was very clear for us as soon as the lockdown happened was that we didn't want to use our social media handles to suggest mm. more activities that children could do or to you know give ideas it was interesting because that's the kind of work we do all the time and we often feel alone in our work and what this lockdown has done is it suddenly elevated our kind of work uh you know in 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 more public spaces um so it would have been very easy for us to just post a basket of activities run you know challenges and uh, suggestions but i thought it was a wonderful time to step back and let uh, you know let other people also do this and let children access uh, other ideas while we thought about what we wanted to do and in one of our group calls we decided that what we do is reaffirm that we are present that we believe very much in the power of what reading and libraries do and that at the moment these are the resources that we already have in formats that you can access you seem to have used this as an opportunity for your team's professional development how are you doing this i mean what are you doing to stay in touch and what do your team calls look like so this has been definitely a growth opportunity for us at bookworm because we are very much a physical group we gather and huddle there's this word huddle that emerges a lot any problem everybody gets together and the first week of the lockdown there was the sense of being bereft and i thought i had to uh, recreate the huddle so that we support each other because uh, you know each of us for all, each and every one of us this was a real novel <laughs> experience and we were reacting differently uh, and i had scheduled a, a a workshop which was going to happen in real time at bookworm and so i asked for two more days from the team and it's amazing what the mind can do when it wants to do something uh, i don't know from where the ideas emerged but uh, i reconstructed a three day workshop on stories for the team into a kind of an online workshop but which also had things like paired discussions group discussions uh different kinds of postings uh, both you know oral as well as written and visual because our team is very much a multi dimensional team and some of us who work in the field are not necessarily comfortable with using technology to talk to uh, others so but some and some are really gifted with you, you know telling us stories and pictures So I designed really a multimodal kind of uh, workshop which excited me tremendously and which seemed to have worked it kind of brought us together so powerfully and since then it's been very smooth yes uh, how do you see your work changing in the coming months and we are engaging with the reality that we may not be able to gather children right. in groups together for everybody's health and so we are wondering and really looking at ideas in how we can do things um, with m- much more slimmer groups or uh, you know two or three children at a time and mm. um, figure out a way that books and stories keep going to our communities we are also concerned about our financial health because we are an ngo and uh, we really don't know what the you know nature of giving is going to be as we move forward for education activities uh but other than that i think we are determined that we are go- we are relevant the story is the most relevant uh, beacon at a time like this and we believe very strongly that we've been preparing all these years actually for for a time like this 
so yeah i'm 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 optimistic on that front that if any group is ready uh, it it has to be us okay. the library yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sujata my last question to you for today is uh, i would like you to fill in the blank after this pandemic if there's one thing that changes in education i hope it is relationships yeah for me it would be if we if we have relationships with our colleagues with our children with community then actually shifting modes is not so difficult as we imagine because the relationship sustains the medium that's such a powerful thought sujata thank uh, you thank so you. much for joining us today thank, thank you. you thank you for tuning in we will be back with another episode next week This podcast is brought to you by the Connected Open Online Learning Initiative of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences Mumbai.